Well, only that if Carol is delayed in her presentation, obviously we want to move that. And I'm pretty much giving my time to her because I know that we had promised, as you have another meeting tomorrow, that we would be more efficient. Okay. Sorry, I didn't have I know, I didn't have here. Competent correspondence. And we have a couple of members of the public here. Mm -hmm. Hello, welcome. Hi. Thank you. Is there anything specific that you'd like to speak to? Yes. Um, yes please. Recently been in communication with you, Julia and Christy, um, regarding a concern um, about the use of school channels for the distribution of non school mm -hmm. program sponsored activities. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're here just to get some clarification on what, on what current policy is and see if there might be some opportunities for us to further clarify or delineate mm -hmm. the school versus these non-school sponsored groups. Mm -hmm. um, so after receiving your email, I, like I said, I reached out to Christy um, and, and in conversation with Julie, it sounds like that's something we're going to take up at the mm -hmm. SU level okay. um, about getting a policy um, for the supervisor union, which we Yep. down to the schools um, was there a specific something that specifically triggered this for you or uh, there's a um, religious sponsored group that rents space in the school mm -hmm. um, my child has received communications through their Friday folder yeah. um, mm -hmm. for this school mm -hmm. um, there's also signage on the bulletin board um, I, I understand that you open it up to Everybody, that's that's fine. Um, what I'd like to see is maybe some some guidelines and parameters around how the school's channels are being used. For example, on the bulletin board, could could this policy be? It has to be clearly disclosed who is the sponsoring organization, who it's not that it's not affiliated with the school. Um, I think for us too, as parents, is understanding what does constitute yep. a, a sponsored school program. Are mm -hmm. those PTO yep. considered non-school sponsored, or does that fall under the umbrella of the school? Mm -hmm. So just having some clar clarity around that for us as parents would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other piece too is, um, uh, again, in, in the spirit of clarifying um, mm -hmm. the school versus these organizations, the use of the school parent calendar um, should should it be built into policy that these are included or excluded from the school calendar? Oh, food for thought. And, and my intention is to, um, when I received a copy of the email, um, I looked to see, we do not have a policy. There are recommended policies in this area. As you can imagine, there's a, there's a let everybody and there's a be restrictive. Right. So, I want to start with our leadership team in all of our schools and really discuss what is current practice, mm -hmm. what are the issues that you see, and go from there. Because I've worked in schools where we've worked through these things. Sometimes schools do it differently, mm -hmm. sometimes they do it the same, um, but uh, there are a lot of, you, you raised some very good points. Thank you. So it's something we, we appreciate you exploring that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we brought a clarification around that. And it really is, I mean, we understand it's not about the hosting. It's, it's about, and, and let me, the impression of sponsorship or endorsement. Yeah. Um, we, we feel concerned that we, we don't want the school to put itself in any position where it is endorsing any you know, non-school groups. Or perceived as endorsing. Yeah, I think it's the perception piece. And again, it depends on the questions. I mean, when we're talking about you know, school sponsoring, after school things, it's a different sort of thing. I mean, that's, but it's it's really that having a line where you understand, you know, who is sponsoring it and whether it's endorsed by the school. Yeah, and I, I think, especially in, in small communities like we have in our SU, where the school is sort of a hub for the community, mm -hmm. it's definitely um, important to have a clear policy. Mm -hmm. So I think it's great that we're going to be exploring that yeah. um, across the SU, really. So, yeah. Yeah. So, thank you for taking it on. Oh, I know it's, a, it's a big issue. So, okay. Um, so that might be something we bring up in another following your leadership meeting. Um, yes, absolutely. Once we start working through what 
we think would be the policy direction, then we'll go through the various school districts and um, at the very least where we would be developing procedures yeah. to make sure. Um, although if you do an all or nothing kind of decision, then it is good to have policy around that yeah. and then back it up with procedures about how you clarify things and how you notify people. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. So, um, to approval of the September 11th board meeting minutes. I'm going to suggest that we move that mm -hmm. um, because Emily wasn't here for that meeting. Mm -hmm. And so um, we'll move that until Sean gets here. Assuming that's appropriate within the context of the agenda. Um, I think Carol, we're waiting on Sunny. <laughs> You're ready. We can move ready this <laughs> report. Sure. I don't want to take up a lot of time either, but I can if you. <laughs> um, so the financial report you received via email. Um, I didn't bring hard. I do have one hard copy if either one of you want. Um, but I thought email would work for you guys. Um, not a lot to say, really. We still are yet to receive the first tuition bills, and that's really what I'm waiting for. But mm -hmm. the, the the largest thing that you'll notice is um, the special ed assessment has been updated, and that's always a. Um, influx. So, um, other than that, I'm not concerned about anything. Um, just monitoring staffing and those sort of things. But um, projecting about a sixty thousand dollar carryover right now. So, I feel, I feel comfortable with that. I didn't know. Any questions about that financial report? No. Okay. Um, I also brought you warrants through the month of September mm -hmm. for consideration. which is now Sue Day actually um, transitioning to, um, to being your accounts payable person as part of our transition at Central Office. Um, she's our AP person for all the schools now other than MBU. Okay. Um, and she likes it, so. <laughs> um, she's doing a great job. Lisa's transitioning with her right now, so. Okay. So I'm gonna make a motion um, for the approval of the warrants through September in the amount of $335,238 and 23 cents. All right, I will second. All those in favor of approving the warrants through September, you know, $335,238.23, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Um, and I did bring you draft one of your fiscal year 20 budget, which is crazy to me that it's fiscal year 20. <laughs> um, Basically, all I've done is um, looked at potential in moderate increases to salary and benefits because we're going to be negotiating a professional agreement. Um, we do know that the support staff is a 50 cent increase to the base, um, so I've um, accounted for that. I've also um, adjusted your health, inc health insurance increase. I'm not sure if I made you aware, but it's an 11.8 percent increase this year. Um, uh, so depending on how we end up or with negotiations for, for professional staff, I've left it the, the same cost share as, as the previous years. Um, it, it's surprising, um, I'm just trying to be careful with my words because we are in open session, um, but you'll notice that the um, increases to your professional salary lines um, are not as large as they typically are if you look to what's um, budgeted from last year but if you look at the anticipated we had a few resignations this year that led to cost savings that have um, then helped your situation this year so it's good I just it, I kept going back and looking at my finances right um, it's because I was surprised too but it, it's a good it puts you in a good position to start your budgeting this year um, overall I also uh, um, added about a two and a half percent increase just as an earmarked figure um, to all your assessments and your purchase services just to have some dollars to, mm -hmm. to, to work with right now because it's so early. I did not adjust any of the tuition lines. I um, was looking at class sizes though and this year is a little bit bigger of a or the, the graduating class a little larger so um, than last year so we could see some increases there um, and we know that can have a <coughs> significant impact um, but overall in draft one um, yeah, I'm showing less than a 1% increase right now um, with, with the numbers I'm using so. uh, one of the things as we start developing this is that we had talked about um, earlier this year the athletic 
budget. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe that's something that um, you and the athletic director could sit down and prioritize. Um, and then we could talk about that at our next meeting. Um, what the anticipation, what he's anticipating needing, um, and what the priorities are. Mm -hmm. um, and only other question budget wise I had was do other schools in the SU have, um, I can't think of what the term is, um, like funds, uh, capital, capital improvement are, funds? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of them do, it's handled differently. We have um, one school looking at bonding right now. They've had capital reserves in the past. Used to be the capital reserves tended to be more um, uh, for very specific purposes. Um, okay. So for about 10 years ago or almost 10 years ago when I first arrived at Franklin Northwest, it seemed the philosophy was if you need the funds for a specific purpose, say you want to replace a roof, then you raise capital reserves funds for the purpose of a roof. Okay. Um, then it turned more into just a generic capital reserve. People were more comfortable because they just didn't know, um, didn't like their hands being tied if something yep. was coming up, you know, that mm -hmm. then took priority over the roof, then you have to go back to taxpayers. So then it kind of changed mm -hmm. into that. Um, then we had this language with the new um, article language from the mm -hmm. state of Vermont that was um, we were forced to use, and that makes it very tricky for voters when you're when it comes time to vote if you remember it's like you know you're spending per equalized pupil is x with the budget but if you have a capital reserve then there was a whole another paragraph underneath that that said or it could be this if you approve article number two okay. um and Which so it makes you not want to approve yeah. the capital reserve right expenses. or you're just confused and we were afraid that right. that would be detrimental to the school board you know just the budget vote so some schools at that point chose to bring those funds into a line in their budget um, that not all, but some started doing that. So everybody's sort of doing their own thing. MVU did a large bond last year. They waited for these things to, you know, and they mm -hmm. developed a very extensive plan and they went for a very large bond vote. Um, so everybody kind of handles it a little bit differently. Yeah. Okay. And it may not be necessary, something like that, because we're talking about a potential bond, but I, I just, yeah, I wasn't sure if that was something that we should I think because my professional opinion is that because um, Sheldon has talked about this for so many years now that you're probably in a bonding situation okay. where it makes a lot more sense um, and then if that failed for whatever reason then you could look at something smaller with a capital article um, but again then you have that issue with the wording of the, um, the articles that We'll be voting on that's confusing, so we have to do a lot of you know, marketing of what we're mm. truly asking. Yeah. Okay. I give me the. I think that yeah. see if I can make it work. The other thing that I've been thinking about is if we want to separate out and or budget separately for security, mm. and, mm -hmm. and not not for all of security, but right now when we. Um, when there's anything we do around security, we'll take it either out of supplies or building and maintenance, or it's coming out of different things. And I just wonder if um, the transparency mm -hmm. about what we're doing security-wise might make more sense to be mm -hmm. a separate line. I don't know if you see that. I, I believe MVU used to do that. They would have a they have safety a, and security. But I think that, well, I, I'm, I'm not as, versed in MVU's budget, but I think it was more for their um, uh, resource officer and those kinds of services yeah. that were in that line, yeah. but it, it, it's d definitely something that you can do, and I think it's, um, you know, it's a valid point yeah. Yeah. given. And I, and I, I'm not, and I'm not necessarily talking about large amounts no. of money, no. but for mm -hmm. instance, we ordered um, the lockdown magnets, mm -hmm. and there, we ended up buying some very inexpensive ones, which may not end up being a good purchase. <laughs> but, the, but the you know original ones were like you know three dollars and fifty cents each. Well, we have a lot of doors, and so that those kinds of things add up. Um, and it just and I just wonder if there are and there's some other things that would go under the under that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Having a good operations budget within your budget, yeah. where you've got, I know some schools have, when they've had a bond and at their end of their bond payments, mm -hmm. 
they would intentionally keep that line item of the bond payment mm -hmm. in the budget so that they could build their operations budget to keep up with me. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Um, of course, you're at the beginning of that discussion, so that would be a long <laughs> conversation. Right. But, you know, making sure that you have your priorities listed out yeah. and you have maybe a three-year plan and, and you know what your community can handle as far as an amount you would put in there. Um, you know, that's... Yeah. But then sometimes big things happen, like roofs yeah. and boilers and... You know, Absolutely. I just think that the, those are the, in the past year and a half, the majority of my questions from parents have been around security. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So that would help with that, so I showing the investment. It, yep. Yeah. Um, it's nice. And rather than having to pull from different pods right. Right. or different right. places, it would be, yeah. you know, really one intentional. succinct place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I would see it still be part of, part of your well, plan budget, you know, yes, your operations yeah, still budget. Yeah, still there, yeah. but just, yeah. just being yeah, really separate. Mm -hmm. um, intentional about mm -hmm. having that separated out. And then the only other place that we've talked about before that I think is um, perhaps underfunded, if we look at other buildings as well, is our um, paraprofessional um, professional development line. I think it's thousand dollars total for all our bars. Yeah, um, believe it or not, it's not a large line in any, I'm not, that, that's, yeah. I think some have um, earmarked more funds mm -hmm. and oftentimes not had them be utilized. Mm -hmm. I think I definitely I hear you. now, mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and from what I gather, that that's changing and there's yeah. more opportunity for support staff than there used to be. So yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. I just think, you know, it, it is not necessarily something that, that all educators want to access mm -hmm. but if we have even two right mm -hmm. that's yeah it's gone that's more than mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. two, two workshops mm -hmm. is yeah. more than mm -hmm. you know yeah. what's in there mm -hmm. so. and with that being a sometimes hard to fill position that might mm -hmm. help entice people so and, and we're you know we, we have parents who are faced with different kinds of mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. um, in terms of their needs and, we'll and we have out. to sometimes seek yeah. specialty kinds of trainings. Yeah. And I, I know I brought this up before, um, but <coughs> I would also think uh, your your replacement cycle in underplant also. I mean, I know that the philosophy has sort of been if we have money left over, then that's typically what we use it for. And there's nothing wrong with that. But again, if you're looking for that transparency and that clear um, you know purposeful representation of how we're spending our money and planning ahead I would argue that you know planning for carpet replacements and table replacements and chair replacements should be a, a typical repair and maintenance cycle mm -hmm. um, and, and properly budgeted for on, on an annual basis and, and not necessarily if it's available mm -hmm. um, because then unfortunately sometimes it's not end up, right, right. Yeah. I, yeah I think History has shown that. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. We don't have a lot of leftover. Yes. Uh, and I, I don't see that changing much. Mm -hmm. Right. Considering that. Right. I mean, your budgets are tight. Kind of you, there's not yeah, the extra right. money in the budget, you know, yeah. so that's difficult. Yeah. And I think you're right in terms of transparency. Um, that, mm -hmm. that it's a need for the school, and so it should be budgeted for, mm -hmm. right, rather than crossing your fingers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially when you have opportunities, if you if you think of that fund plate, when you have opportunities through attrition or some kind of savings that you're happening, if there's turnover in, in staff, that you can sort of try and sometimes we experience that as savings because we want to do that. Other times you can reinvest it in operations and the plan. I you know last year was difficult because there was an equalized pupil drop and mm -hmm. just you know some difficult things happening in Sheldon with that with your tax rate but I think hopefully maybe if things stay as they are right now that might be not the case this year thank you so Carol's here all right welcome Carol what is it here you want me to open the PowerPoint first. All right, let's see if that's the thing that says oh, overhead. Oh, school art. board, go into school board. Okay, close that. 
data over years? Yes. Okay. Let's go with that. Now, has everybody met Carol? Carol Lagat is our after school programs coordinator, crossroads director, um, and she she organizes and, and runs and manages all of the after school programming in all of our schools. And this year is a grant. Uh, many of our programs are sustained with the help of 21st century federal money and those grants end and have to be reapplied for. So um, this was an opportunity for Carol to come and speak with all the boards in the SU about the schools and the programming and let her go from there. Okay, so um, Franklin Northwest Supervisor actually has eight different after school programs and we have five summer programs. Um, the funding, the way that works, it's a 21st Century Community Learning Centers Program Grant. Um, and it will pay for us, since we've been in it now for 13 years, it would pay 50% of the, of the program, okay? So, if you go to the next screen. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's doing this to the slideshow, sorry. From the beginning, I can do it. Oh. All right. So uh, Franklin Northwest started with 2005-2006 uh, uh, grant, <coughs> and it was specifically for Swanton Highgate Franklin MBU for grades five through nine. Looking at it as middle school kids don't have anything, and that this was a primary substance abuse prevention. Uh, effort. Uh, so that is a five-year grant and then uh, within that time Sheldon had been running an, an additional year and they were running it through the town not the SU and um, it was based on they were looking for child care to subsidize it kind of thing. So they started it for first through eighth grade, and it was going to be uh, half paid for by subsidy is what the, the thing, as well as the 21C. Uh, we ran into problems, well, we didn't run into, but Sheldon Aspen, the director in the town, run into problems managing it, and they had approached the SU if the Sheldon Aspen program could join the SU and come under our umbrella, basically. So that did happen. Um, and in the meantime, we also expanded, uh, in 2008-2009, we expanded the um, Crossroads program to include a high school program, and there was great interest in the uh, Swanton and Highgate Elementary School to expand to second and fourth, second, third, and fourth grades. So that happened. Um, these are competitive grants, so you have to fill in about 50 pages or more of information and then you're competing with everybody else in Vermont. Um, so we've been fortunate that we've been approved for all these. Uh, in 2009 and uh, we ended up doing a consolidation grant because we had a after hours, we had an explorers, we had an Aspen grant and they were all on different years so they wanted it in different budgets so we were consolidating so that was another grant writing we had to do so um, and then in 2014-2019 we applied again and we have continued now and this is our last year so we are uh, looking to the boards to say okay do we want to continue because I need to know because the grant is due the end of January so uh, something that I've been purposefully doing uh, the past couple weeks is meeting with different potential program partners and this strengthens your application if you have a community buy-in so one of the things I should have brought it but the allowable um, the allowable things that you can fund with this 21c grant some of them are like um, expanded library service hours so I 
contact. I've been visiting the libraries and talking to them because our program is Monday through Thursday because we've always had difficulty getting staff or kids to stay for Fridays and it was so we are Monday through Thursday. The state and the federal government really want you to have five days a week. So I'm approaching the libraries to do a Friday. So if they can do three to six on Friday, and they would be written into the grant like that. So they would just need to pay half of that cost, and the grant would pay the other half of the cost. So it would be no burden to us. So anyway, so we're working on, I'm working on that. I'm also talking to the town rec departments that have rec departments and also getting their buy-in. Also looking to see if maybe they would like to take over the afternoon of the summer because we have summer morning programs but there's nothing in the afternoon mm -hmm. so we're approaching those rec departments to consider doing that. So these program partners just add to the strength of the grant and so so I think it's 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 looking good. The two the two out of, I've spoken with two out of the four libraries so far and they've been all been and I've spoken with one uh, rec department so far and so everybody is pretty excited. And so, so if you think of any program partners, people that would come into programming or might donate money to the program, let me know. <laughs> so, so you can see over the years, our participation has been very positive and increasing. That dip in 2015-16, that was when um, the Sheldon program was one through eight, and it, it just became too much to have the first graders because every parent wanted to be in. So it ended up being, uh, it, we didn't have the funds to supervise that many kids. And then the school board at the time had I said, um, well, you should make sure that everybody has a chance. So this session you can have some kids, and the next session have different kids. Well, the problem with that is the 21C grant, they look for regular attendance. So if I did that, poof, I have no what they call regular attendees. So it, it hurt us. And then the uh, coordinator at the time was having staffing issues and not having enough staff. And she found all her resources were going to these first and second graders. Mm -hmm. So that's when we had the state come in and do a site visit and that was the recommendation. Why don't you try to narrow your focus with the grades. So that's what that tip's about. Mm -hmm. So next slide. Okay, this is just to show you an overview of the after school and summer programs right now have a budget of $800,000. 425000 of that is 21C grant money. Um, the big chunk on the bottom, that big, that light purple, yeah, that's that's the food service program. That's uh, Vermont Agency of Education um, Nutrition Programs has um, funding for snacks and meals if you qualify for the meals. So that's what that big chunk of money is. Um, we also have that green in the middle there, that seventy-one thousand. That is. Uh, our Team t Northwest Tutoring dollars. That they're sorry. under our umbrella because they're local funding that support the tutoring, and tutoring happens during our after school program and during the summer program. Uh, and then there's a, like the top three mm -hmm. and the blue, those are the school budget allocations. Those are local funds presented as part of the school budget. Uh, we also have a really neat one, the one that's uh, two up from the um, nutrition one is the staff in kind. Now, Sheldon is very strong in this one. This is an excellent, excellent school day linkage as well as school support. And what it is is the school in kind. Uh, that's also added with in-kind from other school, other sites, but Sheldon has the biggest proportion of something like $6,000 worth of uh, the end of day for the paraeducation is is three fifteen. Kids are dismissed at 245. So um, the program starts at 245. 
So what happens is parents who aren't busy with the classrooms or assignments from their teachers, they will come and they work to help staff the after school program from that 245 uh, to 315. And if they want to continue working, we pay them. But from that time there, that's time they pay by for the school, but they're actually in the program with the kids, helping with the kids. So that is an in-kind dollar that adds up over the year, that reduces what Sheldon's board would need to pay kind of thing. So that's, that's, a, that's a really good program mesh, you know, mm -hmm. because the parents are where the kids are kind of thing. So, so I just wanted to give you an overview of that. Um, I'll give you a copy of this. This is the end of uh, the school year. We have sessions. We have like uh, four to five different program sessions. It might be three weeks long by eight weeks long. At the end of the year, we um, every session we do a course listing for every appropriate schedule. So this is showing you a snippet of the end of the year what their courses they offer, the daily attendance at each of the sites. So it goes on to the back. Yep, get up a little bit. Here. And um, you can see the kinds of classes, the number of students. But on the bottom of that first page, you can see there's a summary of uh, how many to pick. So FNWSU has 905 students who participated in the program overall. And participating, um, so looking at the target grades, because we don't do first grade in most of the sites, um, for the SU, that's 57% of all the students in Franklin North Supervisory Union who attend, attended one of our programs during the year. And then regular attendees, that's the regular attendees is what the uh, Agency of Education measures. Mm. They look at those kids. These are kids who have attended 30 days or more. And if they have attended, research has shown that we can have an impact on them, on their academics and school day attendance. So when we report on any kinds of test scores or anything in a, a global sense, it's only on the regular attendees that they look at. All right? And I have some, a couple, I got the summer flyer here and the um, fall flyer. So you can look at these as well. And um, so we're, there's 160 21st century after school sites throughout Vermont. And um, nationally, I don't know how many there are nationally, but there's a lot of 21 feet um, through the, out the, the country. There are all over the country these 21st century community learning centers. And every year they have what they call lights on after school, and this is a um, celebration to, uh, to bring people, to make them aware of the after school programs and the benefits of and all that. So we have a little invitation, and in here I have all the lights on activities that we have going on this month. This is the month. Um, so, do you have any questions at this point? So I have a video, and we can watch the video, which will show a sampling. This video I did for our 10th year anniversary. I need the sound now. I know. I told you something always goes wrong with my sound. There is no sound coming out of this thing. And I know you have great music. I know. Carol, do you want to put your laptop on now? <laughs> Should I think music? I told you there's always something with this. We may have to pause. Or 
you're already with your plugs. What kind of plugs do you get? I have both. I have H, uh, H, yeah. You got an H, D, and F. Yep. I can get that in. You can get that in. You can shut that off. Turn you off. Yeah, it gives you time to look at the materials. Mm -hmm. more, okay. So all these great programs are only possible because we have some awesome site coordinators at our school site. And Sheldon is definitely a shining star. And um, it's great that we get we have school day teachers who work in the program, which just brings a whole nother element. Um, mm -hmm to reinforcing skills and um, there's also you know that social emotional piece that we actually are dealing with in the after school program that uh, I think helps kids work through um, what's appropriate and stuff like that uh, because it's a different kind of setting it's not the formal as formal as it is during the school day so um, speakers on that. Mm. If you wanted to just unplug, you could put the laptop there and go on the computer. Yeah. <laughs> turn the um, yeah. 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 Well, that's interesting. Let's try it if I take this out. All right. You may have to restart it, but... All right. So put it over here. Alright. Yes, I do. <laughs>
school programs dot fnwsu.
Carol would like, you know, a, 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 whether it's a motion or not, but if there's a continued commitment to support, I think that's been helped support the application for the grant. So we are, you will be applying for the grant, Carol? Yes. That, that is a definite. Well, that's up to the school boards. If everybody says no, then that's something. Um, if so. Sheldon has a continued commitment toward providing after school activities for right. students, mm -hmm. then it would, you know, that would certainly make sure that we move in that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, it seems like a fantastic program. I'm glad that it's opened up to so many grade levels. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. support continued support from the Sheldon board um, for continuation of the crossroads program. I will second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Hello. <laughs> so I'm just gonna move us we kind of we waited for you. Um, All right. But if you had a chance to check those out. other town meeting minutes did come to you. They were supposed to come in April. There was emails going back and forth, and then they did come for approval on the 8th. It was in the board packet. Okay. I don't have a signed copy with me, but they did come to the meeting as part of your 5A board packet. Okay. And um, they look the same as the other one, but no one signed. That helps at all, but yeah. I checked my email to see if I could find anything else. Okay. Sure, it won't be back until Monday, but I can check whether that is the Yeah, that would be great, just okay. so we don't have two floating around. Mm -hmm. um, and if not, we can, if we don't, if we don't have them or she needs another copy, we can do that you know. um, Okay, so we are on to old business, Act 46 update. Um, I know I have quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You guys don't mind me starting. Good. So I went to the NMV, the Northern Mountain Valley uh, UUSD meeting last night. It's the Berkshire Bakersfield. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> um, it's a lot to say. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was, it was helpful to go to that. I think it's important just to start that conversation because it is a possibility. Um, and so they are sort of in um, a land of confusion as we are because they could double in size um, after the secretary's recommendation or they may stay the same, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a lot on yeah. the table for them as well. Um, so they have been going through sort of um, moving policies to their board and, and getting those things in line for when the, the new board will take effect. Um, one thing that did come up, and I don't know if you guys know or if we can find out. Um, so I had thought that our um, transitional board would be mm -hmm. our clerk and our um, school board chair. Their understanding was that that is for um, how do they say it? existing districts, but because we would be moving to a mm -hmm. new 
SU that our select board would have to appoint two people. Oh, I don't know that, but I'll find that out. Yeah. Because we received draft articles that went through what it would be for, um, let's just take Franklin Highgate, Swanton, MBU, right? Mm -hmm. That you have a group of schools in an SU, you create a transition board, and it, it, they identified the board chair and the clerk as those are the only two under statute you have to have. Right. So um, you do that. Those are the folks that would be looking at policy. Essentially, they'd really just be focused on building a budget and uh, uh, making sure that there's an election to elect a permanent group of people who move forward. This situation is different. They have an existing entity, and others would be potentially joining it from within and without the SU. So, all right. So, yeah, so Morgan's, Morgan Dave Albert, business manager, his thought was that, for example, Montgomery would have their clerk and chair because they're already within that SU, but because we'd be joining, it would be different for us, is what he thought. Um, okay, I'm so going to we'll, speak with the, I'm uh, meeting with the superintendent on Friday oh, um, to talk about just a couple of these things yeah. that we have in common. And um, I'm going to talk to her about that, and I will also be in touch with uh, the AOE on what they're directing schools to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they are going to try to begin developing their budget, um, but they're, my impression was they're going to keep it pretty skeletal until the um, state board comes out with the recommendations because it's hard to, they could be creating five different budgets mm -hmm. depending on what the configuration is. Um, we did talk about different salary schedules um, and what that would, it would likely mean um, both here in Bakersfield, Montgomery, if they're part of it, um, moving towards our salary schedule. They're also non-indexed, which so it's the same as ours, which mm -hmm. is very helpful, um, but again, that will all depend on whether we end up there. Um, so that was, I mean, I'm going to go next month. Um, if anybody else would like to go, mm -hmm. they would uh, be happy. They were happy that we were there. Um, they definitely appreciate them starting that conversation now because there is so much work to do um, if that is the mm -hmm. place that we end up. So, um, the Secretary of Ed has agreed to have a phone conference with us, um, so that is confirmed for October 30th at 2 o'clock. Um, I think I forwarded you guys the number, mm -hmm. so you can just call in yeah. that way. Um, with it being a phone conference, we may want to have like one spokesperson, rather, because I think if it's in person, you can have more of a conversation, right. but I think right. phone conferences are sometimes hard. Um, to have multiple people talking at once. So if we wanted to, if one person wanted to speak um, on behalf of the board mm -hmm. um, and just outline our points, um, some of the new stuff that has come up, um, and just sort of remind him of what's at stake for sure, um, I think that would be good. And October 30th is also after the next S school board, state board of education meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so it might be too late, <laughs> but um, I'm hopeful that if they do make any decisions on October 17th, it'll be not Sheldon and maybe some of the other school districts that are more obvious for them to make a decision on. Um, at least that's what, what I'm hearing. Um, so the other piece, uh, I don't know if anybody else has seen um, in writing the standards by which they're going to mm -hmm. judge the um, AGS proposals. At their, so at the last State Board of Education meeting, they came up with standards by which they would um, evaluate the plans. Um, I haven't seen anything, a draft form or anything in writing yet to explain what each of those... No, I knew were. from the Secretary of Education that the October 2nd meeting was going to be talking about criteria that they were going to use to judge mm -hmm. the Section 9 proposals. Mm -hmm. um, and so then we saw that, and they were talking about 
larger than 20% discrepancies between uh, cost per pupil. Um, so if you had a town with a ton of debt and a town with real low per pupil spending, that, that may be a further discussion. Um, they discussed if you had a 706B uh, process vote, that that would be one of them. And of course, we did not go that way. Um, and then there was the non-contiguous piece, um, which could have an impact for Sheldon, but you are adjacent to the SU, so you know, there's the corners that are not quite there, but you could make that argument. Um, and there was another one, and that's not jumping to my mind right now. Districts or SUs that have merged in the last two fiscal yes. years. Yes. Um, so, I mean, I think out of those, the non contiguous yep. districts would be our mm -hmm. a place to hang our hat. I was just hoping they would come out with something in writing that mm -hmm. yeah. clarified what non contiguous meant to them. Right. <laughs> um, Does right. it mean South Hero in Georgia? Right. I mean, right. that's clearly non contiguous. Yeah. You're not. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. I've just looked at maps, and you know, but but you are adjacent or contiguous with um, Enosburg, mm -hmm. and then Bakersfield is sort of Kitty Corner, and mm -hmm. Berkshire's kind of. I've probably gone backwards. Yes. Berkshire, uh, Bakersfield, and Berkshire, are Kitty Corner, but they're not quite touching. Yeah, I don't think we. They are, right? Because right. right. Franklin yeah. and Enosburg split us. Right. They Berkshire. don't touch one another, and they don't touch us. Right. Right. <laughs> How can they merge if they're not contiguous? <laughs> <laughs> but they are within an SU, and you are, it's not right. the same thing as um, saying you're going to Jordan Franklin West, right. which is a completely mm -hmm. non contiguous SU. Mm -hmm. But you have a case there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I was hoping that they were as close to Fletcher as we are to Bakersfield or Berkshire. True. Yeah. And Fairfax. Right. Mm -hmm. And St. Thomas Town. Probably. Yeah, I mean, so I was, I was hoping they would come out with it in writing so we could yeah. you know, read it and dissect it. Um, so I don't know if we want to. We can direct somebody to draft a letter. Because my thought being is when they come out, I would suspect they'll come out with this in writing at some point, hopefully. Um, at which point we should respond mm -hmm. with, we feel we meet this criteria and this is why. Um, and so if that happens before our next board meeting, it might be wise to direct somebody to write a letter. Um, I can do that for you. Okay. And beside, is there anything besides the non-contiguous piece? We may do you meet the criteria for geographic isolation as well? Did we make that point last time? We did. Yeah. 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 But they've never once again given us a clear. Didn't so. they? And they haven't responded to the letter that you sent on behalf of no, the I, right? No, I just have a response from the support staff requesting minutes of board meetings approving the Section 9 proposals, okay. um, which has nothing to do with our letters. Right. I think that's probably another metric that we use in their decision making. So I will definitely write another letter and send it to you, Julia, to just roll your eyes over, see if it yeah. Yeah. works for you. And okay. I will do that. And now, Anna, so at the meeting last night when they were going over budgeting, they, Morgan and Dave Aldo, their business manager, had. Um, last year's budgets of each school up on the screen. And so ours was seemed significantly more. And so I don't know if that impacts per pupil spending. Hmm. Not necessarily. Okay. I don't think we're I don't think there's a twenty percent difference. I probably have the per pupil spending if you want to get all of them. Oh okay. mm -hmm. it's under my state stuff. Do you, did they mention or do you know um, their total enrollment? 
with the largest schools total enrollment. We've seen that mm -hmm. before. I know. We've I had an opportunity. I don't remember what yeah, the numbers I are. Can't we've had an opportunity to look at that. I didn't save it. I was just wondering how I have that. Oh. Many more we are than that. We could be close to being Bakersfield and Berkshire combined. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was I mean, thinking. really, I don't know. Yeah. They might have combined, they might have a few more than us, right. but I think we're really... Right. No, I was, I know that we are certainly the largest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bakersfield. Is it with this, this is 2007. This year 17, but that's what I have. They had 210 equalized pupils. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Berkshire, 299. Their spending per equalized pupil was higher than you are, I think. We have 13. Oops, where we go. Berkshire has 299. Bakersfield was thirteen thousand seven hundred and twenty seven dollars per equalized people, but that was seventeen, so say it was even fourteen now. So I was yeah. I'm more my own Montgomery than anything out of that group. Okay. Which one is the K-8? They all are. Yeah, they, they all are K-8s. Okay. Let's see, because that can change your... Yeah. Everything's just clear as I'm doing. Let's see. Let's see. But look at there. Here's Montgomery being in line with our spending, but their equalized pupil is significantly less. I was going to say they have far fewer. Yeah. Students. Yeah. One hundred eighty-three. What is your in fiscal year seventeen? Yep. Yeah, their spending is low though. The two hundred and thirtieth in the list of spending for the state rank. Uh huh. For Montgomery, I don't think more of this state rank was different. This mm -hmm. ended up being different. Not sure that would be budgeted Not for sure. people. Oh, I think mm -hmm. we ended up mm -hmm. somewhere around 11,000 per pupil, right? Gotcha. No, I think they're more than that. Me for 17, you mean? Yeah. Hmm. I think we, I think I remember we ended up lower than initially. Though. Right, when they do their um, budget collections at the mm -hmm. end, yeah. and your actual gotcha. stat books, yep. they change it again. 11,976. Mm -hmm. So it's very similar to Montgomery, actually. Oh, actually, you're 229, they were 230. <laughs> the state ranking. And Berkshire was 207. Hmm. But there's 13,136. Okay. So we probably don't need that 20% threshold. I would um, not think so, no. Okay. So, I mean, it's another... Mm -hmm. Argument that we can make. Mm -hmm. um, oh, um, so they also reported out that uh, Montgomery ended up voting to join the lawsuit, mm -hmm. um, and that sort of leads me to. Um, the conversation that we had at the SU level mm -hmm. um, and, and the clarification that we got um, around the, the lawsuit and the mm -hmm. implications. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think this is open session appropriate. Yeah, um, I, I received information from our school attorney that uh, agreed with what um, Bob was sharing, mm -hmm. that there is no reason you can't pull out of a lawsuit mm -hmm. um, as a plaintiff. You would just need to time it so that it would not, if your intention was to do it um, and be all in, that's one thing. If your intention is to do it to make a stand uh, and to be supportive but mm -hmm. not actually want to incur any costs, then you're going to want to pull out at 
the time that it is um, uh, filed, mm -hmm. right around that time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you could get into, you know, owing a little bit of money, but that would be just a small, yeah. you know, yeah. if you waited till your next board meeting kind of thing, mm -hmm. I'm sure it wouldn't be a big, big piece. But that's completely up to you, and mm -hmm. the board was not in a place last time where they wanted to make that motion, and yet we've had a, a, we had an SU board meeting, and um, you know they asked us to all of the schools to look at that and whether you wanted to make motions. I think some of the communities wanted to wait to see what happened with Franklin too. Yeah. So, did he verify costs too? I know there's a couple <clears throat> numbers floating around. That's just yeah. speculation. Okay. Right now, you, it all depends on how many lawyers, how long things cost, yeah. how long things go. Mm -hmm. If everything is settled in two months, yep. then it's one amount of money. If you have 20 school districts involved, it's less. If you have yep. six, you know, so yep. that's the other piece. If we all sign on and then we pull, I mean, you, gonna you know, you, you yeah. just don't know. Yep. So I had emailed Margaret. Okay, okay great. Mm -hmm. um, just trying to get some clarification. Um, and so I, I said, we understand we're not financially obligated until the lawsuit's filed. Um, but what what um, time frame is it? So she said that they'll file as soon as they can after the state board votes. Um, they're meeting on October 15th, mm -hmm. um, the, the group that's right. bringing the lawsuit together, um, at which point they'll talk about specifics of the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll file within seven days. Um, and so if that's a route that we want to go, um, I would suggest, I mean, I don't know how, I think we'd want to have a meeting, mm -hmm. like as soon as the plan comes out. We probably want to have a meeting anyway, just to <laughs> digest it, but yeah. we'd want to have a meeting to either reaffirm that this is something we want to mm -hmm. still do, mm -hmm. or this is something we want to pull out of. Um, because I don't know what the process would be after they filed if you want to pull out. Um, so that's a risk. The other part of that is looking at if the board is going to make potentially two different timetables of rulings. Like we have the first one where they're going to come out and as they said, they're going to take out the low-hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. And then we have the second one uh, that's also something to think about. Does the, does the lawsuit get filed after their first one because some of the schools are going to be affected and then other schools will have not heard what their final decision is going to be? Having to wait. So, I mean, there are some timing issues mm -hmm. to think about. Yeah. Um, and who knows, we could be in a situation where they want to file the lawsuit, but the state board hasn't made a decision on what happens to us because we might be in that second round. So. Right. Which still might be, we just have to play it by ear. And mm -hmm. um, they're setting up a defense fund to uh, fund the, the costs. Um, <coughs> just scanning the email. Um, they're anticipating costs of approximately $5,000 per community. But like we said, that, right, it's hard to say at this point. Um, and we can't use Ed dollars to pay for this, right? If that's something we wanted to do. That's what I understand. I haven't confirmed that, but I, um, I suspect strongly that that's true. Yeah. Yes. Makes sense. So if that were the case, we would be needing to find funding from somewhere else. Which is part of why it was an easier decision in Franklin. I think it was easier generally because people show up and they do this thing. Um, but also there were community members who said, I'm a fundraiser, I already have so many people who are pledging X mm -hmm. number of dollars, you know. It, it, so they essentially have that, right. that um, covered. Uh, and um, so, however, I, I think you all felt very moved by Bob's um, conversation, and you know, there's at this point it doesn't cost anything. So, yeah, 
it was definitely different information than we had mm -hmm. when we made the decision last time because we thought that decision was we're all in. Right. And um, I don't. Yeah, if we feel confident that we could meet the timing, but maybe say this is our we want to be part of this to just you know, represent and make that stand might be something to think about because I mean again we we discussed we don't seem to have the same community fervor in, involved in, right. mm -hmm. in I, this. Yeah. I think it's hard too because there's not a lot of information yet mm -hmm. that we have. Right? Yeah. You sort of get it if you sign on and if right. you don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel so bad. Feel sort of bad if we signed on and well no never mind <laughs> forget that um, i don't know about bad i, I know what you're saying though yeah. That yeah. it's a mixed message I, uh -huh. right i want paramount to sign on so we can get more information right. um, mm -hmm. did you have that conversation with margaret about you know because i've heard a lot of um if your district is not uh, named to be forced to merge, then of course you're not a part of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that's where I did check with our attorneys to say, so even if we are told we have to, but the board says, eh, I don't know that we have the money or the political will and we really want, you know, and, and change your mind that way. So you don't have to have a reason. You can just change your mind and that's okay. So I wanted to make sure you weren't doing a thing that you'd be locked into. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it's that dilemma of you feel like you're supporting, but and then getting the information <laughs> and then not sure what you're gonna do. Right. And you're not sure what you're gonna do. So that's part of the mm -hmm. challenge. Anyway, I'm comfortable with the decision we made last time. I mean, there was at the SU meeting, you know, Bob mentioned, and it just was like, oh, okay, so there's an option for us to maybe stand up a little bit more and say, no, we really are against this. I do get the idea, though, if we're just in it to say we're in it and then bailing. But, so, I mean, I, I there's part of me that I'm, I'm okay with what we did last time if we want to stay with that. So your decision was to hop on? No. There was not to. It was not to. Because the information we had at our last meeting was that if you sign on, you're signed on. Right. Um, and we just felt like there, there wasn't enough community sentiment in Sheldon mm -hmm. um, that we didn't want to commit. And we didn't have the, the understanding at that point right. about funding. So we didn't want to commit taxpayer mm -hmm. dollars to something right. that we hadn't gotten a lot of community input on. Okay. And we're also, we're not 100% sure even what they're arguing or what they're, I mean, we have yeah. some ideas, but we right. don't really know right. what is your goal, what are you arguing, right. um, what's the, the purpose. And not knowing that, and then knowing that if we invest, we might not have taxpayer support to spend that money. Right. Win, lose, or draw. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, we might not. So yeah. that, that was just where we kind of made our decision okay. to not join. So, but at this point we have a little bit, there's clarifying information around the cost, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. that is no longer an issue. And I don't, I mean, I, our taxpayers haven't really been presented with any of this information. So I don't know if that's a conversation we have. Well, it sounds like we couldn't use taxpayer dollars anyway. Donations, but right. at least have right. a, some sort yeah. of, right. I mean, who who knows, but non -school I'm not totally yeah. clear what the sentiment of residents right. would be. It could. It could really blow your mind or not, um, but I don't know, not not really exploring those two reasons, the reasons why we said no, mm -hmm. I don't know if at this point it would make sense. If, if there's no harm, no foul, mm -hmm. why, I, I say why not, but I wasn't involved in the last conversation because I wasn't here, so, but. Yeah, but I think, I think that's part of why we want to discuss it again tonight yeah, um, yeah. it's because we do we all have this information now mm -hmm. um, 
I, I agree that I think no yeah like you said no harm no foul mm -hmm. um, I agree with that I would just say take a look there's not a single person sitting there right. I don't think there's a lot of community sentiment that's really concerned about this if there was I think mm -hmm. we would have heard a lot more from a lot of people Mm -hmm. I agree, we I agree with the notion of so. the people here, but the last time we had that large 46th meeting, the gym was packed. It was packed. So, just saying. I mean, for the vote. For the vote. For the, for the vote. information. I mean, parents were wanted more information. For some reason, we don't have a great turnout at these meetings. What? I don't know. Um, people will say they're going to come, and unfortunately they don't for whatever reason. But... If you really categorize a specific meeting is going to be about this, this is what we're going to talk about in that kind of forum, it might be or it might not be. Yeah. I'm just saying. I would just hate to be like, no, we're good, and then have people be like, well, we really wanted you to do this. So I, I don't, they might not say that, but I just feel like it, we should dig a little bit deeper. But. It's just one opinion. Mm -hmm. I have had very few parents approach me. Um, their question is always, well, it is typically around school choice. Yeah. So always. do we still yeah. have, Right. will will a merger mm -hmm. mean that we have school choice? Right. And my answer was the proposed merger means we would retain school choice. Right. Um, and so there's the second question is what will this mean to my taxes? Mm -hmm. And my response is I yeah. have no idea. And right. I couldn't even predict. Mm -hmm. Right. No we um, tried. There was no <laughs> there was and no so yeah. I think that that shuts down a conversation mm -hmm. really quickly. Like I don't okay. they don't most people don't even have other questions to ask because they don't know what they would be. Right. Right. I agree that right. people are really concerned with school choice. Yeah. That's their number um, one. Yeah. So the concerns that have come to me have been around um, staff, yeah. Sheldon yeah, staff, absolutely. right? Those gotcha. have been the, the yeah. greatest concerns, mm -hmm. whether they're Sheldon residents or not, right? Yeah. Um, but really in terms of parents Nothing. or okay. other community members, I, you know. But I don't have anything to tell them either, right. so right. I don't right. know. Yeah. That's slippery. <laughs> I agree. I don't like making a decision without information, and I don't like that they're not giving us that information. Mm -hmm. I understand why they're not. I, yeah. To a good extent. <laughs> um, but I just, I hate the idea of <clears throat> this being an option and not mm -hmm. having more information about right. it, which makes me want to sign on so we get that information. Mm -hmm. I think that they're also waiting to get information from the people who are signing on. Right. Because mm -hmm. it's not a class action lawsuit in the sense that Everybody who had a problem with this product signs on about the problem with this product. It's representing multiple districts who all will have, is it a contiguous argument? Is it a geographic isolation argument? Is it a 20%? Like everybody will have different circumstances and those will likely be represented underneath a more constitutional argument about overreach. Mm -hmm. um, I would say those are, if, if I've had any comment, it's been that. Yeah. Right? That people are kind of offended that mm -hmm. we yeah. had a vote. Right. Why, mm -hmm. why is someone saying mm -hmm. what we have to do? Right. Mm -hmm. But even those have been few. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Not many. Right. So, my feeling would be to get more information, and if that means signing on, then I would be comfortable with that. But maybe if that's where. I agree with the information piece. Um, I agree, you know, I don't want to just sign on 
to say no thank you right which I that feels a little a little yucky um, but without information we don't know that I mean we can have a hunch but I don't know there's so much up in the air that you can't make an educated decision around any of this I don't know It sounds as if you're thinking about making a motion to sign on to the lawsuit. Um, and, and that you will reaffirm that decision or overturn it at a future board meeting depending on the, the information that you get at that meeting. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the decision in the state board. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just going through timelines in my head of they're having this meeting the 15th. There will be potentially decisions made on the 17th, mm -hmm. which means that they may be filing that week. Um, and like Sean said, there's no indication of whether they'll file immediately, you know, whether they'll wait. For all of the right. decisions to be handed down, or right. Right. will there be notice of filing before the filing? That's a good question. I'm not sure. They certainly had a warning when they did the records request. Mm -hmm. um, that also serves as a notice of a potential filing, but I don't know if they'll do a separate one. I guess the question is, how serious are we about the lawsuit overall? Because we can decide to jump in, test the water, and then jump back out. We don't like the way it feels. Um, if we're really serious about it, then we need to get answers on the questions that we had about the community, which is going to take work because mm -hmm we have to go out and figure out what they want because if we're going to be serious about joining the lawsuit, then we need to find information. Right. So I think there's a couple of things we need to look at in figuring out what we're going to do. And then of course that opens up a whole other can of how the heck do we get and figure out what the community's gonna do in a couple of weeks and what their feelings are. Mm -hmm. right. Not even a couple of weeks at this point. Right. Potentially, if they file a lawsuit immediately after the first decision from the, uh, the state board. Yeah. Not that I have answers to those questions. <laughs> I, I know. Just... <laughs> I'm just holding them. Yeah. Yeah, they're good questions. Yeah. The timeline's not helpful at all. I think that there are a few existing systems within the school to contact families of mm -hmm. school students. There's not the same kind of systems to contact other community members. Right. So right. I think that becomes yeah. a little bit more difficult. I know we've, you know, um, we've sent postcards to the registered voters. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that means you would get information back, what that postcard would look like, how people would mm -hmm. get you information back from that. Would you um, pay for the postcard posters with school damage? Mm -hmm. right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's yeah. a good question. Yeah. Yeah, that is that's a good great question. question. Um, we can if we're gathering information. We information can't to about say the will of the yes, people. and we oh, can't right. to say you right. know, which is you know, right. why we send postcards before just to ask people to attend. Mm -hmm. I, mean, um, I mean, you could so always do some kind of online Google survey, mm -hmm. which would be a pretty easy thing to do. But getting it out to families is one thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Getting it out to the broader community. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. Um, yeah. Always been the problem. Yeah, that's how you reach yeah. those people. You yeah. can put it on websites. You can put it on, yeah. you know, maybe town websites would do it. But mm -hmm. how many people go to their town website unless they're paying taxes that right. week or yeah. something? Right. Yeah. 
we don't have one. Yeah. Right. And, and you don't have one. one. That's right, because I looked for it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the historical society. society. So these things take time to do. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Good point. And my, uh, my suspicion would be that how um, a parent feels may be different than mm -hmm. how so yeah. another yeah. community member might feel. Yeah. So we can't make an assumption based on one cohort of the yeah. population. Mm -hmm. I like that what we're talking about in terms of getting mm -hmm. input from the community. I don't know what the timeline allows for it. No. It's not realistic. Because if we have this, you know, they'll have this meeting on the 15th and we, we need to make a decision. It's 16th, 16th or 17th. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's hard to... When you will get postcards out by the... Right, exactly. <laughs> and it, it took us three days. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard to get um, feedback from the community if we don't have information to give them. Mm -hmm. Right? We need the information from right. a meeting on the 15th. Yeah to inform the community. Yeah, they're going to ask questions. What are our chances? Oh, yeah. And what does this mean? And what right. is, how much right. money are we talking? Right. Where are we going to find it? That's right. Bake sales. Right. Right. I, don't, you know, I don't know. I don't have answers. You don't know. Can't have yeah. money. Yeah. 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 Right. No. <laughs> no. So, 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 I always... We sold a lot of moms. Moms are a good seller. <laughs> We're moms getting are, out of that. Moms are good. So, unfortunately, I don't think we can make a decision with any more community input than what we currently have. Mm -hmm. yep. um, mm -hmm. That being said, I would like more information on the lawsuit. Um, however, I can understand that not being reason enough to join a lawsuit. <laughs> um, so. Oh, would, they, would you like us to make a motion to you revisit our I don't decision. I have to like you to make a motion. You no. can make a motion. Yeah, right. okay. Okay. <laughs> True. Are we? Re I guess I should say, are we ready to make a motion? I'm ready to vote on, on the motion. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to. Would we revisit our? We didn't make a motion last time. We. Oh, we. She asked if anyone wanted to make a motion. Oh, right. And, we, and I didn't say anything. That was it. Yes, I didn't say anything. Oh, good memory. Yes. <laughs> well, I was asked a lot about it, and I was saying things like, well, they didn't make a motion. Right. We just sat silent. I remember that now. Yeah, I was thinking something else where we had the weird wording of a motion where it was to... Yeah. That was something yeah. different. Different situation. So um, I would like to make a motion for us to um, join the class action lawsuit. Um, do I need to make specific details of what that lawsuit is? Uh, that um, about the Act 46 merger and whether we will join or not. For informational purposes, where should I say that? I don't know, do we want to put that in there? Um, maybe you want to add um, with the intention of revisiting um, in a future meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to make the motion to join the uh, Act 46 class action lawsuit uh, with the intention to revisit our decision um, either at the filing of the lawsuit or uh, the decision made by the State Board of Education. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Uh, any discussion? Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. I appreciate the very thoughtful discussion. I, I think it's a really tough condition. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's and you're very point. thoughtful, though. Um, yeah, so I definitely i am glad that we were all able to have input into that and um, really consider that because I, I do think we are in a different situation because we don't have a lot of um, feedback from the community at this point. So. Well, and it is, and make a decision on something that has a hundred different variables and you right. have no idea right. where right. any of and one variable could change how the other one, you know, how you look at something else. So yeah. it's, yeah, it's. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, the meeting is on October 15th, I believe. Mm -hmm. 
believe it's in Montpelier. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll want to discuss availability. Are you going to reach out to Margaret? And let her know. Oh, yeah. So. through our agenda and sort of coordinate that later. So, um, anything else on Act 46? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will have an update at our next meeting um, about the okay. NMB. Um, their next meeting. Uh, okay. And like I said, if anybody would like to come to that, mm -hmm. you're more than welcome. Um, I will get the next date and send it out to everybody. So, all right. New business snowplow bids. Let me put that up. Because I tried to make it bigger. The spread is fascinating, I isn't know. it? I know. Whenever they came in, Hazel and I, it was like, almost like Christmas. <laughs> like we ripped open the envelope and like, oh. <laughs> So does Hazen have a recommendation? Um, he, yes, yes and no. We have used Good U um, ex excavation mm -hmm. for the past three years, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, he, they've done a good job. He's been he's been happy with them. Um, I did I did add in there because they've done it. Um, I, I was able to add a little extra information, which is that when we had a lot of ice last year, they did come in with a skid steer and they broke it up for us at no extra charge. And uh, one year when we were having when uh, it was a couple of years ago when we had all that snow. We were having a winter carnival, and, and um, but we couldn't actually move in the field because there was so much snow. And so he came in and did some plowing, like on the field, so that we could access the snow but be able to walk um, mm -hmm. at no extra charge. So they're, they're you know, it, he has been very generous about if there's something else we need, um, he will do that. <clears throat> um, we've we've not done business with the other um, companies that bid, so I really don't have any information about them. Clearly, you know, there's a top half that we will um, not be accessing. <laughs> oh, I was like, wow. Um, and because Goodhue has done it for the last three years at that price, it seems like that that has been a fair price. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, the least expensive one up there is still, you know, within about a thousand dollars. Does he feel confident that dairy construction <clears throat> has the equipment that they need to do that? I think so. He, he is um, local. Um, so I have some questions. Mm -hmm. um, the dairy construction. Yeah. Uh, what if we got snow after the 31st of yep. March? Would there be an additional cost? Um, it didn't say that in the bid, but that that would be the assumption. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we were, so we did think about that. Um, one of the other bids said anything after the certain amount of time would be like five hundred dollars mm -hmm. um, per plow, but they were a much higher bid. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I would imagine after that time, if we got snow, there would be an additional mm -hmm. charge for that. And did <clears throat> I see one of the companies? Um, specified when plan would be done before, yeah. like a time frame? Did any of the other ones get that? Uh, they didn't, but Hazen did tell me that when he spoke with them on the phone, that he told them that it would need to be before our buses came. Okay. So it would be, it would have to be before um, 7 o'clock. Okay. Just so you know, I sent, I sent Sheldon's information um, to at least three other contractors as well, and nobody 
there was no interest, but I was doing it for other schools too, and I thought maybe it could mm -hmm. be in everyone's best interest. Yeah. But mm -hmm. so this is the complete group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm. I don't. I. <laughs> I would like to say that I had a competent recommendation, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, We've never had any issue in the last three years with Goodhue? No, there was, uh, Hazen gets here pretty early. Yeah. There was one year when, um, there was one particular day when uh, no one was, it was six o'clock and no one had come. And so Hazen called Goodhue and he said, oh, it didn't snow up here at all. I'll be right down. And so, you know, they came, mm -hmm. they came down, and he, he said he had kind of looked at the weather, and it didn't seem like it had done much here. Um, That's Vermont. But, yes. Right, <laughs> yeah, right. But he did come. Mm -hmm. um, he did yeah. send people, yeah. and, and it was fine. Um, I encouraged Hazen last year to, um, there were, we had a lot of ice last year, mm -hmm. and I did not think that there was enough um, salt or sand, depending on Mm -hmm. um, and so he spoke to him and he started adding more and then Hazen also went out like midday to check mm -hmm. to see if we just needed to add more throughout the day not just during mm -hmm. the plowing. It was a struggle in general I don't, yeah. I don't know yeah. if it was enough to use in some places yeah, yeah. but yeah. that was everywhere. And, mm -hmm. and actually he uh, Hazen and I talked about that today we have typically ordered significantly less than um, Franklin for instance, and Swanton, in terms of how much salt we put down on our own, and so um, Hazen's going to order more this mm -hmm. year and use that a little bit more generously. And will Hazen be using the new tractor to do the sidewalks this year? Yes. Okay. Was that traditionally included? In no. With no. Good Hugh? Okay. Yeah. So we have always done that. It's just the implement that he's used. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> The tractor will give us the opportunity to, you know, fix something if it needs a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know, which is a good thing. Yeah. But typically, this is they say it's in in their truck, so mm -hmm. this is what can be done without leaving your truck or your piece yeah. of equipment. Oh, okay. The rest is what the school's responsibility is mm -hmm. typically. board can make the decision based on any parameters that they want and what they think is the best interest of the school district so it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be the lowest bid if that's mm -hmm. a worry or and the <coughs> you you had said the price good who's charging us with the, the proposed bid this year is what we've been paying the last couple that's of years that's what we the last two years mm -hmm. okay. yep. We know that they can do it. They've done mm -hmm. a good job. Right. I think we keep yeah. keep doing business with them. Makes sense. I, I definitely appreciate how responsive he's been. Like yeah. we've, we've talked a, a few different examples of yeah. um, them going above and beyond, which is appreciated. It is nice when you know that they are bidding the same amount that they've been charging before, so that yeah. gives you an idea of stability, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that is an unknown yeah. with any other vendor. Mm -hmm. to make a motion to accept the plowing bid from uh, Goodhue Excavation. I will second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor of accepting the plowing bid from Goodhue Excavation, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, Christy, can you email that, send that to me so I can have my file? And I'll draw up a contract. In, but also keep it pretty short because I don't have to, I'm certainly not going to read all this to you. <laughs> um, we will be using our in-service on October 18th that afternoon to analyze student data. And and um, that's what, that is what's happening around the SU. So we're, um, 
doing the same thing that the other schools are doing with our teacher teams. We will have uh, unified arts teachers meet with their SU colleagues, mm -hmm. so music teachers will get together, PE teachers will get together. Um, this is not necessarily data that um, that is super meaningful for them in their classes. You know, you know we you know they bring a lot to the table when we talk about kids, um, but this is really about academic data and literacy and math. And so just um, just for your information, I thought I would share some of the types of things that we'll be looking at at each grade level. Um, there's a few places where you'll see it says um, current SBAC block assessments, if administered. And that is because we are also going to have um, some time in November to look at student data. And so we just said you need to administer a block before um, that November date. So if you do it now, great. If you do it a little bit later, we'll look at it later. Um, either way, it's um, good information. But for instance, 3-4 um, is doing f &P testing right now, fitting in a block assessment before this in service seems like a tight timeline, um, so they may look at um, the block later. <clears throat> but, but they will all do that before um, our November in service. Um, oh, they all will also um, look at current student work. Calibrating or talking about, you know, what is this, um, are these good benchmark pieces for looking at other student work along here. I will be going to Killington on Thursday. We are being awarded um, an, an exemplar award for from PBIS um, for the second year in a row, so that's pretty exciting. Um, I just shared some of the communication that we got back from the Vermont PBIS team. Um, and this is based on data we have to send them, and um, surveys our um, teachers do about the <coughs> things that we're doing in the school. And um, I just wanted to share, for instance, one um, metric that we, that we you know, have to send every year is office dis discipline referrals. Certainly we're always trying to um, look at what's happening universally in the classroom and see how, how we can start taking care of more problems, um, more student behaviors, um, more structures and systems that we have in the classrooms so that you know things settle down quicker and that students don't have to be sent out. Um, in September 2016, we had 109 in just in the month of September, and uh, this year we had 49. So that's been going down mm -hmm. every year. So that's that's a good thing. <clears throat> uh, Justine and Jeanette's going from Swanton, so I'll be able to hang out with Ness you call. Um, and then just, I had actually put together a lot of stuff about the integrated field review, and that's been canceled. Um, it may be rescheduled in the spring, although spring is a really bad time oh, yeah. for those kinds of things since spring. we are testing. Did they say why? <laughs> it seems yes. like a lot went into that. Yes, they did say why. Um, there are a number of medical issues at the um, AOE in the um, arm of the AOE that is doing mm -hmm. and in charge of the integrated field. Mm -hmm. huh. okay. So they did not have the capacity to do it. Okay. I'm starting to feel a little bit odd about all this because every time we're involved we get going and then it's kind of full. But I, I want to thank you and everybody that was, you know, working so hard to arrange things. Yeah. I feel badly for um, Maple Run that was yeah. supposed to be tomorrow, tomorrow, I think, was supposed to be their visit. Yeah, was. Yes, I was so, supposed to get interviewed tomorrow. Yes. 
I'm if not I disappointed did, about that necessarily. Said, <laughs> <laughs> if I could send my me, because I was going to, to Maple Run. Oh, oh. Okay. I didn't awesome. know who I was going to interview, but that's where I was going. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, well, we'll let you know if it comes up again. Um, we will be having parent conferences, conferences this year in November. Um, we've always done... Sheldon's always done two nights of um, parent conferences, so there was a lot of concern about the structure of the days and whether we'd actually be able to get lots of kids in, uh, lots of parents in. And so we are doing, we have split it up a little. We're going to do Thursday, November 15th from 3.30 to 7.30, so extend the school day. And then Monday we'll come in late at 11 and do 11 to 7. Um, and then we'll have a half day of in service on Tuesday. I actually uh, kind of put it out to a vote of teachers. It just it, it impacts them far more than it impacts me. Um, so we I, you know, tried to figure out what people were concerned about, and then gave them three options, and that was the option that they that they chose. Um, and then we have school pictures on Thursday. That's always an exciting day. Um, and then uh, we're also doing a presentation um, here in the building from 6 to 9 p.m. in our gym called Survive Vermont. I don't know if you've seen the kind of the sandwich board that's by the um, ambulance bay. Um, we are partnering with the um, fire department and they're going to do three different sessions, and it is around how um, Survive Vermont is uh, community preparedness for emergencies. So it's not necessarily about school emergencies or school preparedness, but it is, um, a, you know, anyone in the community. I, I asked how many people they imagine might come, um, and they're, they're kind of preparing for 200. So if there's that many, I would be surprised. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. So we'll see how many. Um, and we also have someone coming to do a presentation for the staff um, tomorrow afternoon as part of this Survive Vermont. So I, I kind of wanted to get a little preview. Mm -hmm. um, and it's called Stop the Bleed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. I'll let you know how that goes. Um, and then uh, our PTO is sponsoring the trunk or treat on October 27th. Mm -hmm. So I you all just saw my presentation, my newsletter, and, and the updates there. I do have a couple of things I wanted to point out that aren't in the newsletter. Um, one, I wanted to make sure I let you know that I did send that letter to the select board mm -hmm. about the possibility of metering sewer mm -hmm. as they do water. And um, I said that last week. Took me a while to realize you didn't have a website. Yeah. <laughs> no, it didn't take me a while. Um, and the other piece that I would like is to see if you want to make a motion to authorize me to be your proxy or your authority at the Vermont Education Health Initiative meeting that is on the 19th in Lake Maury. And there is basically nothing on the agenda. Uh, I found that out from their secretary <laughs> yesterday, who's a business manager. Um, uh, but I will be there, and I'll attend the meeting. So if there is anything that comes up that needs a vote, I could certainly represent it. <coughs> but to do that, um, with paperwork to be signed, and it would require a motion. I would like to make a motion to have you represent mm -hmm. us at the VHI Annual meeting. Annual meeting, yeah, there we go. Awesome. And, yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? I'll have you congratulate afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Going to 
to an agenda-less meeting. Right. Well, there's an agenda. I just right. don't think there's anything to vote on. Bless you. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So future board meetings, we have a Sheldon Bond vote discussion uh, meeting tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. Um, we have our next school board meeting November 5th. 5 or 5.30? There was an updated agenda sent this out. Well, I had 5.30. I, yeah, I, I, I think it's 5.30. I think, I think it's yeah. this is my draft that's... Um, I think there is nothing. Because I, she asked and I... Um, looked in in our minutes said 5 30. okay so okay. so that tomorrow night is 5 30. yeah um our next school board meeting is november 13th at 5 30 and our next franklin northwest supervisory meeting board meeting is november 7th at 6 30 in franklin mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is there anything else 